Team of the year for 2019. Uh, I've already done videos for the Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere. If you haven't seen those, I'll put thingies up for them. Uh, but basically, I'm going to pick from those two teams. So I've picked my Southern Hemisphere Team of the Year. I'll be comparing those guys from, from, from that team against my Northern Hemisphere Team of the Year and making up a combined team to make a world team of the year as always it's never going to be perfect it's definitely going to be different from your 15 but feel free to leave yours in the comments uh i really do enjoy seeing some of the combinations people come up with some of the reasoning behind it it is pretty interesting stuff so let's get started uh the front row so i had to pick between the north and the south uh for loose head that makes it the Beast up against Alan Dell. For me, it's a pretty straightforward one to go with the Beast. Uh, Hooker, I had Malcolm Marks up against Owens. Uh, I've gone with Malcolm Marks. And uh, Ala Alato against Ty Furlong, so I've gone with Furlong. So two from the south, one from the north there. Uh, for the bench, I will pick uh, Owens. Ken Owens to drop down to the bench from his starting role for the north. And I'm going to go with my two bench guys from uh, from the, the south and north, respectively, ahead of the starter. So Kitsoff for for the, the backup loose head and uh, Kyle Sinclair for the backup tight head. So I've gone with the two northern tight heads and the two uh, southern loose heads. And one of each from the hookers. Second row is might possibly be the hardest choices I've had to make. Uh, I had Etzebeth and Petty for the south, Etoji and Alwyn Jones for the north, so I have gone with uh, Etzebeth and Etoji. So I've gone one of each, uh, and I've gone ahead and put Petty on the bench. So Alwyn Jones misses out, likewise do uh, the bench guys James Ryan and Achia Sneeman. It feels wrong to to drop Alan Wynn Jones out entirely, but I figure if I was going to pick him, I probably need to start him. But I couldn't look past uh, It's a Beth and his brute force, plus Etoje and his general all round skills, turnovers, and whatnot. So, yep, that's what I've gone for. Uh, as I said, even I second guess myself, so I don't blame you guys if you're second guessing me as well. Uh, the uh, and Petty there, I think. He's an all-round skills guy, so if he comes off the bench, he, he adds a bit of impact. And I do like guys off the bench who do add impact as well. Uh, the loose forwards, I've gone with Peter Steph Dutour on the blind side. Again, you, you can't not pick the World Player of the Year, so that means I didn't pick Curry. Uh, I've gone with Adi Savia on the open side. He is my all-black starter over Tipperick, and I've put Billy Winipola at number eight, so that's ahead of Dwayne Vermeulen. So... Yeah, uh, I do like that back row, to be honest. Peter Steff and his general work rate tackles like a machine. Adi Savia, dynamic, and uh, and turnovers, plus Billy V with um, with his ball carrying. That's my tight. Five plus my loose forwards. That's a decent mix. Yeah. That's what I'm going with. Uh, the backs, I had a real tough time picking who was going to be my number nine because very different styles in Fafta Clerk and Gareth Davis, kicking or running. Um, both of them are pretty good at the whole defensive harrying thing, so that's one thing they have got in common, but I have gone with Fafta Clerk, uh, which means I do keep Gareth Davis on the bench, so Aaron Smith uh, misses out. Likewise, Antoine Dupont. So, yep, one of each for that. Uh, the number 10 jersey, uh, it's Pollard and Farrell from my mm, South and North teams respectively. I have gone with Pollard. I like the idea of keeping him with that, that combo with Faf. Uh, but I have dropped Farrell to the bench so he can cover the midfield as well as number 10, which is pretty useful. And I didn't really pick an out-and-out -out number 10 replacement for either side. So that kind of makes my decision a bit easier as well. The midfield, I had Karevi up against Tui Lungi. Tough choice because they're kind of similar players and they're devastating ball carriers, but I have gone with Karevi. I mean, his defense is never 100%. No one's as I guess, but his is 
perhaps slightly lacking, but you definitely get a lot for what he brings with ball in hand. So uh, he's going to be the big ball carrier. And in the midfield, it was ALB, Anton Leonard Brown, up against Gary Ringrose. I've gone with Ringrose, I think, for his all-round game. ALB with his distribution is an option, but um, I've gone with Ringrose. Uh, I've been really impressed with that guy this year. If, he was impressive last year as well, but this year especially. Uh, the back three... And again, some tough choices. I made some late changes to this one. Uh, for the south, I had Rod Radra, Bowden Barrett, and Cheslin Colby. Uh, for the north, I had Josh Adams, Liam Williams, and Damien Pinot. So I've kept Colby on the right wing. I've kept Josh Adams on the left wing. And I've gone with Liam Williams at fullback. So I have kept Bowden Barrett, but I've dropped him to the bench. Which means I cut Pinot and I cut Rod Radra. Um, keeping Colby, keeping Williams, and keeping Adams plus Barrett on the bench. So, yeah. I should have mentioned I've dropped uh, Hadley Parks and um, Josh Goodhue from the midfield options as well. But, um, yeah, that's the team. Uh, it's pretty flexible. If I was going to criticize myself, I'd say perhaps there should be a few more specialists. Like, I've got Bowden Barrett, Owen Farrell, uh, and, and Pollard, so i got three guys who can play 10, uh, Pollard and Farrell can obviously both play 12, Barrett can play fullback, uh, Liam Williams can play on the wing, Colby can play fullback, so there's a lot of flexibility in that squad, I guess, Xavier can play eight, um, did I mention that I put Tipperick there? No, I didn't, I put Tipperick on the bench as my backup loose forward, in terms of impact, I think he's your guy as well, again, flexible in his position, um, I think maybe at line-out time. I kind of wanted Omahani in there, but I didn't pick him. So, uh, yeah, I've gone with Tipperick. He's a decent line operator as well. But, yeah, definitely a big South African feel to this one. I've been pretty harsh on my All Blacks. Um, maybe generous to Ireland with two starters in what wasn't their best year. Uh, the one Aussie starter. Hmm. That's tough, man. That's very tough. Uh, just to give you an idea of how this team has changed from last year, here's some of the guys who had in my team of the year last year who have dropped out. Brody Retallick, James Ryan, Peter Armani, David Pocock, Johnny Sexton, Geronimo De La Fuente, Jonathan Davis, Jacob Stockdale, Rico Ioane, Stuart Hogg. There's not a Scotsman to be seen in this team. Uh, Guillaume Girado, there's no Frenchman either. Uh, Owen Franks, Kian Healy. Ken Healy, I've probably been pretty harsh on because he is a class loose head. Uh, Alan Wynn Jones, Connor Murray, Emiliano Boffelli. Those guys all dropped out, but a few guys have retained their spots. Uh, Kitsoff, who I had starting loose head last year, he's on my bench. Malcolm Marks retained his spot. Tyke Furling retained his spot. Adi Savia retained his spot. Fafta Clerk retained his spot. Peter Steph Dutoy moves up from the bench. Uh, and Owen Farrell retains his spot on the bench. All the other guys, I believe, are changes from last year. So, um, that's it, man. Team of the year, job done. Uh, it'll be an interesting one to compare this team uh, next year to see how things go. Next year is kind of a, a normal year, and then we've got a Lions Tour to be followed. So, uh, there's plenty of interesting stuff going on. Uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed uh, 2019 in your rugby terms, I guess, um, South Africans especially with the rugby championship and, uh, and the World Cup, obviously, Welsh fans with that Grand Slam, New Zealand fans with the Crusaders winning, maybe, um, Saracens fans will be a bit mixed with winning the Champions Cup, but also getting docked some points, so anyway, uh, it's been a good year. Uh, it's been a good year for rugby. As always, you guys let me know your thoughts on the team. Do let me know who your team would have been. Because as I said, it is always fascinating stuff. Um, yeah, man. Thanks for 2019, guys. Moving on to 2020. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks to my Patreon people for the support on there. That's always much appreciated. Thanks to Jordan uh, for editing the videos, including this one. It's always very helpful. Um... Yeah. Viewing, subscribing, liking, commenting, all that stuff. Cheers, guys. 
uh, all the guys who have sent me stuff over the year, too many to mention, but appreciate it. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys. I'm still recording this in 2019, but I'll see you guys uh, in the new year. Cheers, guys. Talk to you again soon. See you later.